Hey everybody, happy Thursday. I hope you're having a great day. I am still in the building today working with the Hometown Heroes. So if you need me for any reason at all, I am an email away or a buzz at, uh, to the office away. I will be here within a few minutes, okay? But let's go ahead and start our lesson. So today's lesson is using equations to solve problems. You do have homework today based on the fact that yesterday we did our quiz in anticipation of me being gone today. So your homework is 6.11 and that is on the Google Classroom. I'm sorry, it's not on the Google Classroom, it's on GoFormative like always. Or I have paper copies up in the front of my classroom as normal. Our learning target is I can solve story problems by writing and solving an equation. So don't forget to fill out your planner and your notebook. Awesome. Let's go ahead and start our lesson today. So our warm-up is remembering tape diagrams. So we, you don't have to create tape diagrams, so don't freak out on me, okay? We're just <laughs> looking at some and using them to help us. So our situation, and we have a situation, and we have a tape diagram that represents that uh, situation. So I am feeding my three axolotls a special pellet tree. I feed each axolotl the same amount of pellets. They are still begging, so I feed them each two more. At the end, I realized I fed them a total of 24 pellets. So, again, we have this diagram that represents it, and you're going to write an equation that could represent this situation and diagram. You're going to uh, solve your equation and find your solution for A. So, what does A equal? And then, what does your solution mean in terms of the situation? What does A represent in, your, in my story? Go ahead, pause here, try the warm-up, and come back once you're ready. Okay, awesome job, guys. Let's go ahead and go over these answers. So you could write two different equations for this situation or diagram, okay? So first, we have three groups, okay? My th three groups are the three axolotls I have. And we see our three groups. They specified right here. And each group is filled with A plus 2. This has a total of 24. I fed them a total of 24 pellets. Now, we can also uh, write the distributed form of this. So we have three A's, which is three A. We have three twos, and three times two is six, so plus six. And our total still stays the same of 24. Now, what we don't know in our information, I feed them the same amount of pellets, and then I feed them each two more. So the plus two is me feeding them two more pellets. I fed all together the three axolotls to six pellets, so each of them got two, and again, two times three is six. So now let's go ahead and solve our equation, okay? So I'm going to solve each equation a different way. We're going to get the same answers, though, okay? So first, I'm going to start with my distributive problem. So 3 times A plus 2 is equal to 24. So first, I'm going to get rid of my 3. Since my 3 is multiplying everything in the parentheses, I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. When I divide both sides by 3, I'm left with A plus 2. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. Now I'm going to get rid of my plus 2. The opposite of adding 2 is subtracting 2. So I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides. After I subtract 2 on both sides, I'm left with A equals 6. Now that's solve the 3a plus 6. So for this one, before I can ever get a by itself, I have to get 3a by itself, which means I need to get rid of my plus 6. So I'm going to do the opposite of adding 6, which is subtracting 6 on both sides. 
When you subtract 6 on both sides, you're left with 3a equals 18. And now I'm going to get rid of my 3. My 3 is multiplying the a, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I still get the same answer of a equals 6. Now, what does our variable represent in this situation? What is 6? Six? 6 what? Well, remember, we don't remember the original amount of pellets. We just know it was the same amount. So... This means I fed them, or Miss Grant, or whatever you want to say, originally fed them fed each axolotl six pellets. Now I know some of you are actually really curious about the pellets. They do eat pellets. You can actually Google it, um, like axolotl pellets. They're these like extremely small uh, pellets that are, I'm pretty sure, like basically ground up fish that are like can press together. So they do actually eat those and they will um, eat about eight at a time. So this actually isn't too far off from the truth. Okay, great job on the warm up. Let's go ahead and move on to our actual tasks for the day. So our first task of the day is at the fair, and we're talking about Tyler. So Tyler is making invitations to the fair, because obviously nobody knows about this fair. we got to invite people. He has already made some of the invitations, and he wants to finish the rest of them within a week, so within seven days. He is trying to spread out the remaining work to make the same number of invitations each day. He draws this tape diagram to represent the situation. So our goal is to write an equation that represents the situation and the diagram to solve our equation. And then how many invitations should Tyler make each day to finish his goal within a week? So what is our solution to our equation? What does X equal? So go ahead, pause here, try these three problems and come back once you're ready. Okay, awesome job on this. So, first of all, he made some, some number of the invitations. We see that here with the 66. He wants to finish the rest within a week, so that's why we have seven X's to represent the seven days. And we have a total of 122 that he wants to make. So, first of all, our total is always what our equation is set equal to. Now, on the left-hand side of our equation, we're going to say what our tape diagram is made out of. Well, we have 7x's and a 66. So 7x plus 66. So now let's go ahead, move down to 2, and solve these equ this equation. Our first step is to obviously rewrite our equation so we can solve it. Now, we're going to try and get x by itself but to do that we need to get 7x by itself first meaning we have to get rid of our plus 66. The opposite of adding 66 is subtracting 66. So we're going to subtract 66 on both sides. When you do that the plus 66 and subtracting 66 cancel each other out and so we're going to subtract 66 on both sides. When we do that, the plus 66 and minus 66 cancel each other out, and we're left with 7x on the left side. Now 122 minus 66 is equal to 56, so 7x is equal to 56. Now we need to get rid of the 7 in front of our x. The so 7 is multiplying. So to undo multiplying, we're going to use division, the opposite. When you divide both sides by 7, the sevens on the left cancel each other out, and you're left with x. And now 56 divided by 7 is 8. So x equals 8. Well, how many invitations does Tyler need to make each day? He just needs to make 8 each day. So he needs to make 8 invitations. each day.
Great job on this problem, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to the next part of this task where we're talking about Noah and his sister. So Noah and his sister are making prize bags for a game at the fair. Noah's putting seven pencil erasers in each bag, and his sister is putting some number of stickers in each bag. After filling three bags, they used a total of 57 items. So we have this tape diagram that represents the situation. And Noah writes the equation three times x plus 7 equals 57 to represent the situation. Do you agree with him? Explain why. And then what could be another equation that we could use to represent the situation or diagram? Go ahead, pause here, try this problem, and come back once you're ready. Okay, great, great job, guys. So for the first one, you should have agreed with Noah. So you should say yes because. So three times x plus 7 means we have three groups, and e in each group there's x plus 7. This is true. I see our groups here. So I see our first group here, second one here, last one here. So we agree with him because there are three groups. And in each group, there is an x plus 7 and a total of 57. Okay, so we see our total up there. Now, another equation that could represent this is the distributed equation, okay? So that means we have three x's. So I'm going to write three x. We have three sevens, and seven times three is 21. So I'm going to add 21 to my three x. My total is still the same of 57. So this is also another equation that could represent our situation and diagram. Okay, great job on this. Let's go ahead to the second part of Noah and his sister. Okay. Now for this part, we're going to pick one of our equations. So we have our 3 times x plus 7 equals 57, or the 3x plus 21 equals 57. You get to choose. You're going to pick one of the equations and you're going to solve it. And then number four, how many stickers is Noah's sister putting in each prize bag? So go ahead, solve these two problems, and come back once you're ready. Okay, great job, guys. So I'm going to solve both equations. So you see no matter which one, you get the same answer, and you see both of the ways I, uh, to solve it. So for the first one, the 3 times x plus 7 equals 57. So for this one, the 3 is multiplying the parentheses. So I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing. When I divide both sides by 3, I'm left with x plus 7 on the left. And 57 divided by 3 is going to be 19. So now I'm going to get rid of my plus 7 by doing the opposite of adding, which is subtracting by 7 on both sides. When you do that, you're left with x equals 12. Okay, great job. Let's try the next one, the 3x plus 21 equals 57. We're still going to get x equals 12. We're just going to solve it a different way. And for this one... We first need to start by getting 3x by itself, so we need to get rid of 21. We're going to do the opposite of adding, which is subtracting. So we're going to subtract 21 on both sides. So when we do that, I'm left with 3x is equal to 36. And now I'm going to get rid of the 3 in front of my x, and the 3 is multiplying the x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And now when you do that, you're left with x is equal to, and 36 divided by 3 is 12. So we get the same answer. We just solve it in different ways, different steps. 
Great job. So now how many stickers is Noah's sister putting in each bag? Well, Noah's sister... put 12 stickers in each bag. That's what our variable represents. That's what our solution means. Great job on this one, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to the last part of At The Fair. Okay. A family of six is going to the fair. They have a coupon for $1.50 off each ticket. After the discount, they pay a total of $46.50 for all their tickets. Okay, go ahead, pause here. You're going to write an equation that represents the situation, show how to solve your equation, and then how much does a ticket cost without the coupon. Pause here, try this, and come back once you're ready. Okay, great job, guys. So, first of all, we have a family of six. Obviously, they all need to buy a ticket. They get $1.50 off, and they have a total of $46.50. So, what we're going to do first, we have a family of six, and they all have the same thing. That means we have six identical groups. So, I'm going to write a distributive problem for this. Now, we don't know the original ticket price. We don't know the ticket cost without the coupon, so I'm gonna use X to represent that. We're taking off $1.50, so that's subtracting $1.50 from each ticket price. All together, we have a total of $46.50. Okay, now let's go ahead and solve it. Start by rewriting your equation. For this one, I'm going to start by dividing both sides by six because it is multiplying our parentheses. When I divide both sides by six, on the left, I'm left with what is inside the parentheses, x minus 1.50. 46 divided by 50 is equal to 7.75. Now I'm going to get rid of this subtracting $1.50, which would be adding 150 to both sides. When you add 150 to both sides, you get X is equal to 9.25. So now... What our solution means is the ticket cost without the coupon. So each ticket costs $9.25 without the coupon. Hey, great job on this, guys. We are done with At The Fair, and our next task is running around. It's about a running club. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to that now. So now, Priya, Han, and Elena are members of the running club at school. For each situation, we're going to write an equation find the solution, and explain what our solution means in terms of the situation. So for our first situation, Priya and Han plan a fundraiser for the running club. They begin with a balance of negative $80 because of expenses. In the first hour of the fundraiser, they collect equal donations from nine parents. It brings their balance to negative $44. Go ahead, write an equation. Find a solution and explain what your solution means in the situation. Pause here and come back once you're ready to uh, check your answers. Okay, great job. So our beginning balance is negative 80. We get donations, which means we're given money the same amount from nine parents. And we don't know how much that is. 
we're going to represent that with a variable. I'm going to use the variable x just because I always use x. So we have negative $80, and we're adding the same amount from nine parents, 9x, where x is the amount we get from each parent. This brings us to negative $44. Okay, let's go ahead and find the solution. Let's solve our equation. So start by rewriting your equation. And now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my negative 80. So I have my 9x alone. The opposite of a negative 80 is a positive 80 plus 80. So I'm going to add 80 to both sides. When we add 80 to both sides, the negative 80 and positive 80 cancel each other out, and we are left with 9x. And now negative 44 plus 80 is equal to 36. Now I can get rid of the 9. The 9 is multiplying the x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 9. When you do, you get x is equal to 4. <laughs> So what does this mean? What is X? What is our unknown in our situation? Well, that is how much each parent donated. So each parent donated $4. Okay, great job on this one. Let's go ahead and finish this lesson off with our very last running around situation. The running club uses the money they raised, which they still owe, uh, to pay for a trip to a canyon. At one point during the run in the ca canyon, the students are at an elevation of a positive 128 feet. After descent, I'm sorry, descending at a rate of 50 feet per minute. So we're descending, we're going down. They reached a final elevation of negative 472 feet. So again, go ahead, try and write an equation, find your solution, and tell me what your solution means in terms of the situation. Pause here and come back once you're ready. Okay, great job. So for this one, we start at 128 and we go down so many feet, uh, 50 feet per minute. And we end at negative 472. Since that's our ending feet, that is our total. So we started at 128. And since we're descending, we're going down. That's going to be a negative. So we're adding a negative 50 times how long we're going down. We don't know how long they descended, so I'm going to use x. So a negative 50 feet times the amount of time that they went down will tell us how far they, they went down altogether. So now, for our solution, we're going to solve this. Go ahead and rewrite your equation. So first, I'm going to get rid of our 128. This is a positive 128, so the opposite of a positive is a negative. I'm going to subtract 128 from both sides. When you subtract 128 on both sides, you're left with negative 50x on the left and negative 472 minus 128 gives you a negative 600. Now I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 50 to get rid of that 50 in front of the x. Remember, they're multiplying, so the opposite of multiplying would be division. Make sure you're dividing by a negative 50, like I almost forgot to write. Now when you divide both sides by a negative 50, you're left with x equals, and now negative 600 divided by negative 50 gives you a positive 12. Now this is actually gonna make sense why it's positive when it comes to our solution. 
in terms of the situation because this is how long they descended. You can't descend for a negative amount of time. It has to be positive. So the club went down. They descended. For 12 minutes. Okay, that's how long they went down for. Okay, great job, guys. Now what I need you to do, I need you to get on the go formative, and the first thing you need to complete is your cool down. After you complete your cool down, you need to complete your homework. After the homework, you have 15 minutes of admentum you need to work on. Okay, Great job. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you all on Tuesday. Remember, no school Friday or Monday, so I will see you all on Tuesday. Bye!